I swear this was not uh, rigged at all. So we elect uh, two people. One's a faculty member of the year, so someone associated with our program. And that year, this year, I am so excited that it is Dr. Julia Robertson for our faculty member of the year. Dr. Robertson. Oh, right there. She knew already. <laughs> you have to give a speech about me in a minute here. Yeah, you do. And then our uh, next person here is for the Community Attending Physician of the Year, um, also somebody I voted for, um, that I don't think is here today, but it's Dr. Mohan Kumar of Cardiology. <laughs> Phenomenal physician, somebody that um, I think all of us talk about frequently about how fantastic he is and how much we've learned from him. So thank you, Dr. Kumar, for everything you've done, and we will let him know for sure how much we appreciate him. And now to Ellensburg. All right. I didn't know I was going to get roped into talking, but here I go. So our first award is for the faculty of Ellensburg, Dr. Wagenack. So he didn't escape us, so we get to keep him for another year or so. All right, and so for our community attending, we have April Haugen. I probably totally butchered that, but she's one of our wonderful midwives in town, and she's really helped further our OB experience in Ellensburg. So I don't think she's here, but we'll let her know. So I'm a little bit in shock, because um, I'm at my table at home drinking a cup of coffee, and I get a phone call and says, Russ, we'd like you to be the keynote speaker. It's like... Is this the right number? Are you are you talking to the right person? Because I really have been out of it for a year. I retired in March of 2020, right before the pandemic started. So serendipitously, I have missed all the fun that you have all been having. But at the same time, though, I'm honored, incredibly honored to be here in front of you. And uh, I do have history, and I am going to talk to you a little bit about some pretty interesting events that led to this moment. So let me first start off by saying um, a quote. And the quote goes something like this, and I think most of you have heard of it. It's not what I say or do, but it's how I make you feel that will leave the impression. And so I would hope that you, the 2021 graduates, take a moment to take it in and to feel it. And to feel the joy that you have and to feel the work that you have and the accomplishments that you have had that have gotten you to this point because it is gonna be memorable. I would also argue that while you have gone through high school graduation and college graduation and medical school graduation, I would argue that this moment may not be as grand or as large as those moments, but I would say this is the most transformational moment you will have because you are going now into the real world and the decisions that you will make are not going to be looked at anymore other than by you. So this is an important event. You no longer have the backup of faculty uh, to help you through this. You'll have colleagues, of course, but you don't have the backup anymore of faculty. I also want to talk a little bit about the 2021 graduates. So can I get hands raised for those graduates? Where are you? So what have you gone through as 2021 class? Well, first of all, um, I was the CEO at Memorial when we went from one institution in this town to two, or from two to one, sorry. <laughs> I've had too many beers already. And that was an incredible moment for this community, but it was also an incredible moment for you because you were used to getting your education in two different institutions and they were both very important institutions. So that was critical. And then I think of the pandemic and what a year that has been. And first of all, I gotta take a step back. As a citizen of this community, what you all have done and how you all stepped up for this community. Uh, my hat is off to you 
and I think this entire community's hat needs to be off to you. So I would hope you would give yourself just a couple seconds and give yourself a round of applause for really helping this community through something incredibly difficult. I also want to talk to the family members and to the supporters because we've used the concept of collaboration and we've already used it a couple times, uh, but you would have not gotten here without the collaborative help of several people, right? You would have not gotten here without your family members, you would have not gotten here without your friends, you would have not gotten here without your faculty members, and you would have not gotten here without the community supporters. And so collaboration is ultimately a, an item I'm going to talk about here, but it is extremely important and it is why you are here tonight. So a round of applause, if we could please, to all of the supporters who have gotten these residents through. Let me briefly introduce myself a little bit more. So um, my healthcare career started a while ago, and I'm looking around here, and probably most of you weren't born when I started my healthcare career. But I was a pharmacist, and I graduated from Washington State University. So first of all, I'm just gonna pause for the Go Cougs. There's gotta be one or two out there. Uh, well, there were some, there were some, No, no, okay, so then after 10 years of pharmacy, I went back to school and got a master's in health administration, and that was at the University of Washington. That's just the opposite of really what I wanted. So after graduating from the University of Washington, my first job happened to be this, quote, two-year fellowship for this community hospital called Yakima Valley Memorial Hospital. And I worked with a couple of individuals um, in that fellowship um, whose names I'm gonna bring up, and you may or may not have heard of them. The first one's name is Rick Linaway. Rick Linaway was the CEO of Memorial for 38 years. I followed him, by the way, but he was the CEO for 38 years, and nobody, stays a CEO for 38 years, not anymore. His, and Rick was the face of Memorial. And the person that was at his side was a gentleman by the name of John Vornbrock, and I think John may be on the PNWU board, or at least was. John was the backbone of Memorial. So between John and Rick and their teams, much of what we see of healthcare in Yakima is really due to their leadership. So they were absolutely incredible people. And as most of you know, and particularly in a residency, it is very, you learn very little. Actually, it feels like at times you very, learn very little from the didactic piece. Where you learn is in real life. And that's what I learned in working with Rick and John and Memorial for some 30 years. So I started in 1989, and now we're gonna get into the history of the residency. And my first day of work was June 28th, 1989. And at my table, I think only one or two people were even born before then. But three weeks into the job, I was asked to go to a meeting in Seattle, and I can't remember who the sponsor of the meeting was or anything. And like many meetings, what you really look forward to are the cocktail, is the cocktail hour and the hors d'oeuvres afterwards, right? But that's important because you're able to network with people. And so I'm sitting at a table with an individual, I'm having a beer or something, and this gentleman is talking with me and we get to know each other and he finds out I'm from Yakima. And so he starts talking to me a little bit about Yakima and what, he's, and what it turns out, this gentleman was the residency director for the University of Washington Network. And he started to talk to me about we want to establish a residency in Yakima. Now that, I think, is a pretty serendipitous moment because what happened after that is I went back, being the young administrative fellow that I was, and I said, Rick, guess what happened? There's this guy who wants to start a residency in Yakima. Soon afterwards, Rick started talking to me about pairing with this young physician who had left Yakima. He was a practitioner in Yakima, and he started to get, and, and this young practitioner was getting a fellowship in medical education. That young gentleman's name was Dr. Mike Maples. 
So Dr. Mike Maples and myself, we met monthly, weekly, and sometimes daily putting together a potential plan for a family practice residency in Yakima. Rick had assigned us to do the feasibility study. Now, after hours of meeting with accountants and consultants and administrators and other residencies and physicians, etc., we learned a lot. But we also learned that putting a residency, a new residency in a community was not going to be easy. And so there were many things that we ran into along the way. And it took almost three and a half years before the residency actually started of Mike and I working together. So what happened was very interesting. So you put in and you start talking about a residency and you think it's a slam dunk. Why not? It's important. Yeah, it's gonna be expensive. Yeah, the hospitals are gonna to have to come up with some resources, but it also really leaned on the medical community, the physicians in this community. And there were two groups of providers who were very, very concerned about the impact of a residency for various reasons. I won't go into the specifics of that, but what I can tell you is without those physicians participating, this residency could not exist. But what I also learned was the impact of never say die. And this community stepped up to the plate, Dr. Maple stepped up to the plate, the Memorial Board, and at this time, the other hospital, St. Elizabeth, said we cannot let this happen. And they figured out a way for those educational pieces to occur. And they did. And ultimately, all education now occurs in Yakima. And so, while I've just given you in five minutes what, ha what has happened over about 10, 15 years, it is very, very important because what would this community be like if the family practice residency, Central Washington Family Medicine, had not been here since 1993? It's hard for me to imagine. Primary care would be incredibly difficult. Our emergency rooms, if you think they're busy now, they'd be twice as busy. Physicians would be moving out of this community without key primary care. So whether you know it or not, Central Washington Family Medicine, you are the keystone or one of the keystones to the success of healthcare in Yakima. So again, thank you very much and everybody give yourself an applause for what you have done. So now the residency is a totally different place. It has 10 residents, it has multiple teaching facilities. It has all sorts of things and there went my notes. Um, but what I can tell you is I learned a lot um, during that time and so let me talk to you about a, a few key lessons. Number one, collaboration. Collaboration is critical. It takes a partnership to get anything done. I think you know that as providers and I think we know that as a community and without this community collaborating and it would have been hard by the way, collaboration is always harder, it provides lifelong sustainable solutions. Without collaboration there is no residency. Second lesson I learned was passion, passion and mission. And Memorial, along with its board members, along with its community, had a passion and mission for making sure healthcare had access in this community. And for that, we are very thankful. And you had to be flexible. So the third thing I'm gonna talk about that's really, really important is you have to listen, listen, listen. And as Mike and I talked to several individuals throughout this community, we heard all sorts of issues, all sorts of concerns. And what we had to do is make sure we address those and listen to those as best as we could. Because if you don't, things will backfire on you. And so while it was not perfect to start off with, the listening is what made all the difference. And then the last thing I'm gonna talk about is change is hard. Change is very hard. And uh, while you think change may be something that's simple and easy and you don't understand why it's not happening, everybody has, has to go through their journey of change and everybody is different. And you have to respect it and you have to understand it. And that's what I also learned. And so I thought the residency was a slam dunk. I couldn't understand why people were resisting it. But we had to let people go through that journey of change. And they did. And now you are all sitting here in just an amazing way because we allowed people to go through that journey of change. I'm gonna end actually with a quote that is in this particular book. 
And again, I want to congratulate everybody here. I want to congratulate the residents I want to congrat uh, that are graduating. I want to congratulate the current residents and the incoming residents. But I think the, the purpose of all of us and what we are doing, I think, is said very well in this one statement. I believe the very purpose of life is to be happy from the Dalai Lama. And I will just end with that. And thank you very much for inviting me. And I was quick. So that's what the presents are for. I had no idea. I was talking about this with the R1s Wednesday or Thursday. doesn't really matter. Um, how much goes on behind the scenes for our admin folks, particularly in our family medicine residency? And I don't know. My mind just gets overwhelmed with gratitude because especially... You know, you all didn't necessarily sign up for like doing an integrated behavioral health training program. Again, we kind of were like, hey, we're just going to do it. And then you're like, okay, we're going to jump in. But the support of doing orientation month, the support of just answering our questions, Trina helping out with scheduling, my gratitude for you all. Because you all asked to do more uh, than we could ever ask for. So my gratitude. I also want to uh, acknowledge our senior leadership team as far as Angela, Dr. Sprina, Paul, Millard, Laura, Stephanie, Vanessa, and Julie, just for again continuing to support this program as we continue to grow exponentially. Lastly, and we're going to move on here, uh, my mind's like beat me up, I'm thinking too many people. Uh, the past leaders of Mike Maples and Russell Meyer, I still remember Russell, Mike, and I, we were up at Snow Day uh, at White Pass, and we had this crazy idea of starting an internship program. And that was, I believe, in 2016, 2017. And to see it now in what we're doing and also the trainees that we've had come through here, my gratitude from Mike and Russell for uh, supporting us throughout this. I also want to thank our supervisors. Uh, Ruth and Stephen aren't here. Doctors Olmers, they're not here today, but I do want to express gratitude for them. I also want to express gratitude for Bridget. Uh, so Bridget, for people that don't know, is the director of our behavioral health. She is the big boss uh, of, of everything. And her leadership, her dedication to her craft and the support that she gives, not only our, re our interns and our fellows, but the residents, our patients, our community, thank you uh, for that. I also want to say uh, thank you to Arissa. Arissa is um, our site trainee director, so oversees our internship program. And this is a sad moment, but an exciting one. It's awesome how those two things can happen simultaneously that Arissa's gonna be moving on. This is the fifth time that we've done this. Sure, fifth time, and I cannot overstate, similar to what I was saying about the administration of the Family Medicine Residency, how much goes on behind the scenes of doing schedules, working through things. Arissa just does it all. And, and the best thing about Arissa, maybe not the best thing, but my favorite thing, is that she keeps Bridget and I very sane. Uh, if people know Bridget and I, we're emotional, we get riled up. And Arissa is always the voice of reason with us. So, um, we my, love you, Dr. Walter. <laughs> my gratitude. Yeah. I also want to thank our program coordinator, Diana, who's not here today, and then also all the other BHCs. Amelia, I know you're here, um, as always, and just continuing to support our trainees and our fellows. Um, damn right. Damn right. Yeah. And, and an alumni of our program. That's what we like, right? We're trying to steal what the residency found out, is that when you bring them here and you train them, they stay. And that's what we hope to continue. I also want to express my gratitude to the residents, uh, particularly ones that are graduating, but all the residents. As I was saying in the Talking Sticks uh, on Wednesday, it never ceases to amaze me on Monday mornings when I'm driving into work and I'm tired. And I'm like, I don't want to do this again. Good God. But then you get into clinic and you see Dr. Stedman, or you see Dr. Patel, rocking a tie today, bold move, but he's rocking a tie today, which is good. But you see Dr. Kotolsky, you see Dr. Boot, you see all of these residents that are just so engaged in the process. They're so willing to jump in. And it makes me emotional thinking about everything that you all have had to do, not only the past three years for the graduating class, but just this past year of COVID, of jumping in, head first, not with a lot of safety rafts or anything, you were just there. My gratitude for you all, and thank you for being here and continuing to be here and supporting our community and our patients. So I wanna welcome our new cohort, if you all wanna join, so Gracie, Stephanie, Chelsea, and Brandon, if you all wanna come up, where's Brandon? Brandon's back there, so come on up, come on up. 
this table is making me, I don't like that table. Okay, I'm gonna start singing. Um, oh, if you all could stand right there, we should have went over this, we should have rehearsed. So this is our new class uh, that is coming in. So Chelsea and Stephanie come from Pacific University, Brandon comes from the University of Central Florida, and Gracie is coming from Walla Walla University. All of them have very unique stories already, all inspiring individuals. The thing that I have been so grateful for over this past week and a half is that they've been engaged. Like if you can imagine going through didactics and just sitting in a room for like eight hours, they've had to do that like eight times already. It's been ridiculous. But they've asked questions. They've been excited. Even today, Stephanie coming up to me and said, hey, we got to work on our concordant charting. We got to work on a documentation. Like, who the hell says that, right? Like, that is just that, that engagement piece. And I'm just super, super excited for this upcoming year. So my gratitude for y'all being here. Thank you. And we're excited about y'all being here. Yeah, you guys can sit down. We didn't get it. Um, so I also want to acknowledge, uh, as we've talked about already, and I think, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Myers, about talking about the families uh, of the residents and particularly our family of our uh, interns and the uh, spouses and the significant others. So if Ken, Triland, and Andrew could come up, uh, we have a gift for you. There's cards right there. You yeah! Woo! Woo! Now, Alyssa, we also have one for Zach. And Will, we also have one for Kelsey as well. So we'll give those to you to pass along. But, you know, internship's a year, weird year. So for residency, right, you have three years. So largely you get to, you know, go somewhere for three years. You get to be established. Most likely your partners and significant others. Your family comes with you for those three years. Internship, it's a year. So there's always this kind of interesting conversations that I'm sure families have of like, do I go? to Yakima for a year, Yakima for a year, which we love Yakima, I think it's a great place to live, but I think from somewhere looking in for a year, it's always that question. And knowing particularly you three, um, and then all the partners, what I've talked to the interns and the fellows about, the support they feel from you all, their engagement, that you have fortified their resiliency throughout this, thank you for that. And thank you for being here uh, even today. So, let's give it up to them. Let's go, Ken. Let's get hyped, man. Let's get hyped. That's right. That's right. So, my mind, we, we kind of did a graduation a, a week or so ago, and during that time, my mind was coming up kind of with like sayings and things that really summed up the year. And two always keep coming to mind. One comes from Will. Actually, it doesn't come from Will. Will told me about it. He stole it from someone. But the idea of the saying, good, bad, too soon to tell. And then the second item is this thing that we've constantly done, both with the residency and then the uh, psychology training program, of radical ripples. There's been many moments throughout this year. I've got to share this. So our three interns this year... They moved to Yakima, which is great, and they had a great idea. They said, hey, let's live together, which, I'll be honest, wasn't really sure what that was going to happen or what, what that was going to do. We never had that happen. Yeah. So we're excited about it. Hey, it sounds like a good thing. They had this new place that was being built, but it wasn't ready when they got here. So they got a place downtown, right? That's a great thing to do. I don't even know if it had AC. Again, this is like June. I'm not sure if it had AC. Alyssa's room maybe did or did not. Did not want to ask too many questions? Wasn't the safest part of town either. So they actually moved in with doctors Olmers, Stephen and Ruth, for like a couple weeks. So can you imagine like starting your internship? Not necessarily having like a place to call home, like stability. And then they finally got into a place and it turned out great. But it was that moment of good, bad, too soon to tell. And what was amazing about throughout all of this year is there was m many moments, COVID on top of this, going through orientation, going through dissertation defenses, postdoc applications, seeing a bunch of different patients doing handoffs over and over again. There were so many moments of good, bad, too soon to tell. And you know what's really badass though? They showed up, like every day. You all just showed up. And I'm sure when you all went back home, maybe there was like, do we really need to show up? But you all came. <laughs> And you intervened with our patients. You served our community. 
You made us, and it makes me emotional, you made us incredibly proud on so many different levels. When we talk about a radical ripple, and I just want to read some stats that I pulled that I was able to share with them a week or so ago, but I want to share it with everybody right now. So out of our five trainings, they completed 3,500 visits within this past year. Now, that also doesn't include for our interns any of the visits that they completed at Yakima Neighborhood Health Service, which then probably would double it to about <laughs> seven. They completed over 1,500 handoffs. And for people who don't know what that is, that is when a, maybe a provider goes into a room, talking with a patient, sees that they might need some support from behavioral health in any way possible. And we see that patient that day, that access piece. They completed 1,500, just those five handoffs. My favorite stat, they saw almost 2,000 unique individuals. When we start to think about Yakima, yeah, hell yeah. When we start to think about Yakima and this idea of behavioral health that is still being uptaken, 2,000 unique individuals within our community during a year that was trying difficult and hard for everybody, particularly our community, they saw almost 2,000 unique individuals. Talk about a radical ripple. Talk about a radical ripple. So I want to acknowledge them both, all, both, all five of them individually. So I want to welcome up Alyssa Gonzalez, if you want to come on up. So Alyssa comes from University, is it the University of Texas A&M? Texas A&M University. There we go. Texas A&M. Yeah, you can. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So the word that I would use to describe uh, Alyssa is fierce. Now. I've told this story like a hundred times, so now when I'm telling it, I feel like it's losing its meaning, but it really does speak to this fierceness. So during our first couple weeks of orientation, I was paired to supervise Alyssa the, for the first rotation. And we're up in clinic, and we're talking about just the logistics, like how do you get a patient, how do you go through handoffs, and whatever it is. And most interns are very receptive, or just kind of observing. Maybe some questions being asked, but largely just kind of soaking it in. Alyssa, though, goes, hold on, let me do this. Let me try. If I mess up, tell me, but let me try this out. And there was a moment that I was like, oh my God, like how fierce that is, that willingness to jump in uncomfortable situation and do incredible work. She's gonna be going on to the University of Wisconsin School of Medicine for a pedi pediatric oncology uh, fellowship next year. So we're super proud of Alyssa. And are you talking? Do you want to say anything? No, Alyssa's not going to talk. I don't know if any of them are. But yes, our gratitude, Alyssa, for today. I feel like I'm photo bobbing that photo. <laughs> All right, Carly can come on up. So Carly, the thing that comes to my mind, and my mind was kind of beating me up when I was writing these notes down. I was like, do I really want to say this? Because I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> my mind said, say it anyway. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to do it. So one of the things I think is a telltale sign of a good BHC or behavioral health consultant is do you make it normal to patients? Which Again, you might be sitting there and thinking, it's like, well, that's weird. Why would that be a thing? Well, because it's not common. When we think about our community, and particularly when we think about some of the places that our interns rotate at, Natchez, Yakima Neighborhood Health Services, even CWFM, there's still a big stigma about seeing a behavioral health provider and asking someone to come into the room. Carly makes it normal. Now, what's interesting about it is I think oftentimes when we say that, it's like, oh, that's just our personality, that's just how she is. And that's not what it is. Carly works at making it normal. Carly works at creating an environment, a context when she's working with patients, when she's working with providers, when she's working with residents, that it causes them to lean into us. And when we think about what we want BHCs to do, at the most basic level, 
but in a very profound way. We want it to be normal. We want it to be routine. And Carly does that better than anybody. Carly's going to be going to the Oregon Health Science, uh, what is it again? University. You know, thank you. Yep. yep, there it is. I knew there was a thing. That, she's going to be doing a pediatric uh, fellowship in primary care behavioral health, so we're happy about everything that she's going to be doing, and we're excited about that ripple continuing out. Thank you for being here. I defended my dissertation yesterday, so that's about all the presenting I can do this week. But love you all. Thanks for inviting me into your family. It's been a, really a pleasure working with every single one of you, so thank you. I feel like there should have been like a mic drop. Yeah. Look, Carly, we got a gift, Carly. You can walk off without the gift, but we do have a gift. Um, there should have been like a mic drop on that dissertation. Thanks. Okay, and our, our last intern, uh, Kristen Thurman, if you want to come on up. So Kristen comes from us, uh, from the Pacific University, as well as Carly. And the word that my mind kept saying to describe Kristen was engagement. So similar to what I was saying about with Carly, there was a patient interaction that I continue to think about with Kristen. It was an individual from the Natchez Clinic. And for people that are outside of Yakima, Natchez just is a very rural, small town that doesn't have a lot of Maybe openness, Dr. Bauer can probably speak to this more than anybody, doesn't have necessarily a lot of openness to behavioral health. At least it didn't at the beginning. Uh, Kristen had a patient that definitely at the beginning would never have seen a psychologist, never seen a behavioral health provider in a million years. Kristen, though, in her only unique way, caused that engagement to be there. And in supervision, we were talking about this, and Kristen's not one to brag on herself. But we would talk about how vital, how healing this was for this individual. How life-saving it was. Because yes, they were working on a lot of great interventions, they were doing a lot of great things. He was, the patient was working through substance use and just doing a really great job. More so than that, she caused that patient, not caused, my mind says that doesn't sound right. She, say it again. Facilitated. She facilitated, thank you, Marissa. <laughs> but we need it for her. She facilitated that patient to be engaged with the health system. When that patient has something come up with their health care, maybe tomorrow, maybe next year, maybe it's a year from now, because of the work Kristen did, that individual is gonna say, I can go to my doctor. I can go to my health center because of that engagement. Kristen's gonna be doing her postdoctoral fellowship in primary care behavioral health at the Providence System in Portland, and we're just really, really excited about all the things that you're doing. Thank you, Kristen. That was a strong no. That was a strong no. Okay. Our final two trainees, so our two uh, postdoc fellows. Now, it's a little bit unique because they're not actually done. Our interns are done. Postdoc fellows, we say it's like a month, but really, we're just going to try to keep them. So, but we still hope. So, first one I want to bring up is Hillary, uh, Dr. Dritterson, that can come on up. If Hillary's walk didn't demonstrate what I'm about to say, nothing did. So Hillary, Dr. Richardson comes from the uh, Western Michigan University. She did her internship with us and then she stayed on as a postdoctoral fellow. The word unquestionably that I would use to describe Hillary is willingness, without question. You know how trainees, like residents, are ones Everybody that's a faculty member will understand this. When residents like, hey, just give me feedback directly. Just do it directly. No one wants that. Like, everybody says it like it sounds good. It sounds like a good thing. Like, we don't want it. Like, we don't want that direct feedback a lot of times. Hillary may be the first person that I think actually believed that. That had a willingness to lean in when we were having conversations. And I still think of this very beautiful moment this past year. I think it was March. And BHCs were having a really great month, and we were sharing through emails like, hey, we're seeing our community, we're seeing a lot of patients, we're about to hit a record for the number of visits that we completed a month. It was kind of this rah-rah moment. Everybody was getting excited. Hillary, showing that incredible willingness, 
supported the team completely, said, I'm here, yes, and I'm struggling a little bit. Seeing a lot of patients, it's draining, it's tough, it's hard. She was the first one to say anything. This willingness to say, hey, I'm here, I'm still a part of this, and I'm struggling. And then the response from everybody, because everybody was feeling that, but just no one said it. No one had a willingness to say it. And the engagement then that the team had after that was just incredible. And I my gratitude for it. Hillary's going to be staying on with us. We hope for a pretty long time. But no, we, uh, we, we really are excited about Hillary staying on. And thank you for this year. You got a month, another month, but thank you for this year. We do have a... I thought she was going to speak. So, our final trainee is Will Summers, Dr. Summers, come on up. So, Dr. Summers comes from uh, George Fox University, just right across Portland. And it's not a word, it's more of a phrase. And I used this when I was writing uh, somewhat of a letter of a recommendation, but really it was an email uh, to a group of folks over in Philadelphia where uh, Will, significant other Kelsey, is doing residency at. And I said, you know, if anybody's seen a beautiful mind, there is John Nash, that's right, John Nash, sure, we'll go with that. <laughs> One of his letters of a rec literally was just a short sentence of, this man is a genius, that's it. So the thing that I wrote, to the colleagues in Philadelphia, I said, and it makes me emotional, Will is one of us. And what I mean by that, Will's ability to reach people, Will's ability to be flexible, Will's ability to look at people with compassion and grace is embodied, as all of our trainings do, embodies everything we hope a BHC will be. And I thought really cool writing that, you know, Hey, he's one of us, and that was it. And they responded back, I can't wait to meet someone one of us. And I'm super excited for Will to go over to Philadelphia. I'm not that excited, because I wanted to keep him here. But you've got to do what you've got to do. Hopefully, you all come back to, to Yakima. But my gratitude for the past two years. He did internship with us, and right now, he's going through a lot of job offers. He, people, he's a hot commodity over in Philadelphia and uh, New Jersey right now. So our, our gratitude, Will. I just want to say a quick thank you to everyone that's here. Um, and as Dr. Brownman gave a long list of thank yous to a lot of the administrative and leadership that we have at CWFM, I gratefully appreciate it. Um, whenever I was in Philadelphia interviewing with people, I felt like I got to regularly brag and boast about the just all the support we have from top to bottom throughout the whole organization, both through our leadership, residents, faculty, staff, nurses, and MAs, and then of course the wonderful BHC team. So thank you all for being here, and uh, I really appreciate each and every one of you. So thank you again for welcoming our trainees, welcoming them into the family. Thank you for our outgoing interns and fellows. I'm excited about in, uh, incoming class. And I tell you what, Michelle is up next, and she was telling me she has like the best speech prepared like of all time. So I'm like really excited for this right now. <laughs> privilege of acknowledging the individuals whose role in our graduates well-being has been so sophisticated and so meaningful um, please when I call your name stand and remain standing and um, once we get done please go to the right we will take a photo and we will give you a token of our appreciation. So I would like to begin with Joshua Bowen. Please stand. And I'm gonna have everybody hold their applause until they all are standing. 
Charles Katalski, please stand. There you are. Or at least see where, where we can see you. Uh, Jordan DeLay, where are you? Please stand. Yeah! Randy Peltier, please stand. Woo! Randy. Bui, where are you? Please stand. Chris Grimm, please stand. Vineet Mendorada, please stand. Sheetal Mendorada, please stand. Patrick Muir, please stand. And Stuart Wadsworth, please stand. Will you all join me in a round of applause? front so we can take a photo and give you a gift okay <laughs> um, so Jen came to us um, it, starting at her second year um, and we are so lucky to have gotten her at that time that's okay they won't help me much anyways <laughs> um, and she came to me um, when we had our first advisee advisor meeting and um, I will always admire this she came with vulnerability and with trust um, in somebody who she had never met to share her story and her hopes of a new residency um, and so much courage to start out at a new place with a class that she hadn't gotten to do intern year with but hope would become her family and to really lean into that. Um, and I think at first she was nervous and she has grown into a confident, caring physician and teammate and colleague and friend for all of her classmates and her under um, classmates as well. And what I find most amazing is that she has a way with her patients and with anybody who's chatting with her of being present and of just bearing witness to pain, to happiness, to hopes, and making it all feel welcome and open. And I just am so excited for your next steps. This year is gonna be quite an amazing adventure. Uh, you and Chris getting married, starting a new job. On the west side, unfortunately, uh, we will lose her, but she will be closer to family, and I am just so proud of the amazing physician that you have become. The next one is uh, uh Dr. Mendorada, Dr. Mrs. Mendorada. Um, so this is kind of cheating because uh, her advisor was uh, Dr. Minda Papazian for the majority of her residency. And I got to see her through the last six months. Um, and I know that Dr. Papazian was just so proud of this uh, strong, courageous physician and partner that you had become um, of all of your colleagues. Sheetal is a um, quiet person until she sees an injustice and then she will advocate for making something right, for coming up with a solution that really addresses the underlying concerns or problem and she's just creative with her solutions as well. And she doesn't shy away from that work, which can be draining, exhausting, but she just leans into it. Um, she is going to Southern California this next year. Um, and I'm excited for her and um, Dr. Mr. Mandarada's uh, adventure there. But uh, what I will miss is her leadership, particularly on our inpatient services, no matter how stressful 
they can get. She has a way of finding each individual on her team and checking in with them and finding a way to help, whether it's bringing an extra bit of water or um, taking an extra admit or checking in on a patient that maybe wasn't hers, but that she knows is concerning that person who doesn't have the time to check in on them. So um, we will miss you um, and we are excited for you. So come on. Um, my last graduate is Dr. Kim Wadsworth. Start making your way up this way. <laughs> um, Kim, Kim is my, I will say my first advisee. Um, she came in six months after I became an attending and she is really my teacher. Um, she had a goal of what she wanted out of medicine and she has the courage to actually pursue that. Uh, she is an advocate for kind of all members of our community as well as what medicine should look like. So we're lucky that she's headed over to Olympia because she'll be advocating for all of us on the capital steps. <laughs> but what I also admire is that um, the path doesn't always have to be a certain way and residency often is taken as a cookie cutter, like we have to get these certain blocks done. And Kim looked at the schedule and was like, nope, that doesn't fit what I want my away rotations to look like. I need these experiences. And again, she came up with a creative way to get herself experiences in direct primary care so that she could see if that is really where her passion lies. And it was, and I'm so thankful for that because in doing so, you showed me the courage to challenge the norm to question when something doesn't seem quite like it will help you achieve a goal and I'm just so excited for what Olympia holds for you as well as kind of the changes that you will make it to our healthcare system which needs advocates in it to fix this system so thank you so much Hi, I'm Ryan Moultrie. I'm one of the faculty members. Uh, I'm going to put this out here. There we go. Okay. And uh, I have the um, distinct uh, honor and uh, distinction to get to present Dr. Charles Kotelski. You want to come up here? There we are. All right. So a little bit about Charles. He was born in Chicago, moved around a little bit finished growing up in a small town in Minnesota. Charles then went on to attend Saba Medical School somewhere out in the, in the Caribbean Sea. Um, apparently he got advanced degrees in snorkeling and uh, deep sea fishing and somewhere along the line got his medical degree as well. Um, and uh, he has just completed uh, an illustrious career here at Central Washington Family Medicine. His next stop is Rice Lake, Wisconsin where he's doing emergency medicine fellowship. He leaves tonight and will start Monday morning at 8 a.m. apparently. Um, after that uh, and beyond that, he's in, already enrolled in the United States Army. Um, he's becoming the fifth generation of Katulski men to serve the United States. So we're proud of him for that. Okay, um, I have a few brief, very arctic and icy stories to share with you, um, so I think you'll be comfortable. I want to share, share with you about Charles um, so you can appreciate what kind of doctor he is. Um, if you could pick a few words to describe Charles, hardworking, tenacious, fearless, and gutsy. But it might surprise you to know that he didn't necessarily start out that way. On the first day of his obstetric rotation, the, the first day on the job of resi residency rotations, 
apparently he got a little overwhelmed. He got a little scared and he cried just a little bit. <laughs> it's okay, Charles. Fast forward three years and coming full circle, on the very last day, uh, or his last shift on obstetrics, he had to help with a very difficult uh, emergency surgery, helping Dr. Wang with a ruptured ectopic pregnancy, I believe. Eventually, it became uh, even worse, and Dr. Dufault had to be called in to help complete the surgery, thus leaving her laboring patient unattended. Charles stepped out of the OR, delivered Dr. Dufault's patient, sewed up her lacerations. Apparently he made some brownies for everybody on the floor and he was able to step up and contribute to the team, face his fears and come full circle on, on his fears on the first day of residency. So proud of him for that. Um, another example of his teamwork and selflessness is that once in a rare while, uh, us attendings have to cover the entire hospital floor without a resident. They actually get a, a completely a day off. And on such a rare occasion, Dr. Ellingson found himself in the hospital by himself having to, to run the whole service, which we can tell you is, is not fun when you don't have a resident. Charles took it upon himself to come in and cover FMS with Dr. Ellingson and made his life tolerable. So that's another selfless move on his part. Another thing you may not have known about Charles is he's very competitive. Uh, during his second year, he and Dr. Vineet Menderada apparently were battling to see who could get the most procedures. <laughs> one, one night on call, they both got wind of a fellow who got in a tangle with a chainsaw, and uh, both envisioning hours of complicated suturing, they raced to see who could get to the patient's room first. They arrived simultaneously, to the bed, sweating and jockeying for position, only to find that this guy barely had a scratch on his leg. <laughs> Apparently the patient saw the look on their faces and commented, sorry to disappoint you guys. <laughs> so, who won, by the way? Uh, I did. Okay, you did, okay, well done, all right, okay. Um, uh, another word for him is compassionate. He once had a patient who was dying kind of a, a long, sad, drawn out death, um, as we've all had, and on his own time after hours, he'd go and visit with the patient and his family, working them through the difficult process of dying. Um, and this went on for a couple weeks straight. And apparently afterward, the, after the patient passed, the family was just beyond themselves with gratefulness. And it's okay to say, oh, Charles, good job. <laughs> um, and uh, finally, uh, when I talked to uh, his nursing staff, anybody red team here at all? Red team nursing staff? Okay. Or red team. Yeah. They said they are really going to, they're going to miss him a lot. They're going to miss his positivity and his friendliness. And in particular, they're going to miss his old man jokes. So I was going to try one out. What does a neurologist say when he leaves the room? Seizure later! Woo! <laughs> That's right. Seizure later. Okay. Um, they also told me that all the old ladies absolutely love Charles and they think that he's Superman, or, or that you think you are Superman. I'm not sure, but in any event, we think you're a super doctor, super guy, and so I've got a, I've got a Superman mug for you and some other goodies, and also, I guess, a diploma, so come on over here and get it. I have the pleasure of presenting Christina Bowen and uh, Sierra DeLay. So, yeah, powerhouses. Um, I am presenting some words from uh, James Dennis R. Green, who uh, moved on to uh, Montana and was uh, Christina's advisor. So, um, here we go. Christina has always had a fearlessness and creativity to problem, problem solve. I loved watching her work with expectant and new mothers in the family birthing center. She delivered tough news with understanding and respect. 
Many times she would go above and beyond to accommodate her patients' needs and unique situations. She knew her patients, their hopes, their disappointments, their chronic medical journeys, their struggles with relationships or drug or setting boundaries. She set a high bar for connecting with her patients beyond the medical record. I could trust and rely on Christina to do a remarkable job and even advocate for her patients when she thought my medical plan could be improved. One of the special moments that best displayed Christina's personality was when I first visited Ellensburg. I was doing a fourth year rotation for four weeks and being included as part of the resident activities. We had a ResVac meeting at KVH and then headed to Christina's house for resident bonding activities. We played the game Exploding Kittens with her great kids. We had a great time and it verified for me that the relationships in the Ellensburg community, residency and clinic were sincere and heartfelt. I'm so delighted that Dr. Bowen is returning to serve at the CHCW clinic in Ellensburg in October. She will be an amazing addition to the faculty. Thank you. Come on up, Christina. And I have a little gift for her. I'm going to start with James uh, Dennis Ardreen's impressions of Sierra as he was uh, the site director. So he said, Sierra was the resident chief I needed. I can't think of a more perfect person to assume the leadership role of behalf, uh, on behalf of the rural residents as we work through a difficult year of COVID. Struggling resident performances and even her own personal job situation. Always graceful always poised, always putting her best foot forward. I'm not asking for it, but I'd gladly do a thousand more hours of Zoom meetings to re-experience our fun and enriching exchanges to make our program better. I'm so delighted that Dr. DeLay will remain in the Yakima area and add her skills and exceptional care to the community. Now I'm also going to channel uh, Michael in Powers who has also moved to the west side um, and she sends some words of love from the beyond over there. So I first met Sierra when she came over to our house for dinner before residency started so we could get to know one another as advisor advisee. She was anxious to get started off on the right foot and had questions about time management, how to improve her clinical knowledge and stay organized. Little did we both know that two years later, she would accept the challenge of being chief resident and totally rock it. Sierra is a crier, so she likely doesn't want to hear any of this or anything flattering about herself in general, but too bad. This is our chance to showcase her achievements in her professional and personal life. I've been struck by three things about Sierra as I have watched her develop into a confident, team-oriented leader. She has been able to retain her humanity despite the stress of residency and motherhood, has continued to be able to laugh at herself and with others in a therapeutic way and go the extra mile her patients and for her patients and her team. She takes her responsibilities and continuity of care seriously, even when it's inconvenient. This approach shows integrity. I know she will continue to grow and shine in her future role at Yakima Neighborhood Health, and I hope that her path will bring her back to CHC 
a W again at the right time. It's been an absolute pleasure to advise Sierra over the past three years, and I'm sorry to miss her graduation ceremony. I hope she knows that I'm always a text away. Yes, you can send me a picture of that unidentified rash. <laughs> okay, thank you. Sierra? All right, so I am, I have the pleasure of introducing and uh, congratulating Dr. Vineet Menderada. And, uh, I remember when you came to us three years ago, you had a lot of enthusiasm for medicine and some things outside of medicine also. Um, a couple things that come to my mind specifically are Shoes were one of them, new shoes, and uh, sports was the other one. You definitely brought some life to Silver Team, and uh, we had a lot of good times there, and I know that your entire Silver Team, including nurses, MAs, and patients will miss having you there. You came to us very goal-oriented. Um, by the way, congratulations publicly for... for uh, acceptance to a sports medicine fellowship very very quickly you knew that's what you wanted to do in fact i think you came into residency basically knowing that's where you wanted to go and of course we forced you to do a little ob along the way and thank you for engaging in that even though it was not your favorite i don't think you changed your mind um, but you were very goal and uh, very, very focused in, in what the end game was going to be for you. And in a lot of ways, for your advisor, you made it easy to coast into autopilot because you, you did what needed to be done. You sought out your uh, rotations, your electives, um, and you kind of took care of yourself most of the time. I don't think I ever got an email or sent an email saying, hey, you got charts that need to be finished up or messages. Like, I don't think that actually ever happened. And I see Stephanie shaking her head now. Um, so thank you for that, too. You, we're all grateful for that. And you were very detail-oriented quickly. I was confident in your medical decision-making ability, trusted you on the floor in the hospital and knew that you would call when you needed help. So it's been a pleasure and uh, thank you for what you've brought to the team, the organization, the residency and we definitely congratulate you um, and wish you the best on your next move. Um, so far I don't think anybody else has given a piece of advice and so I almost chickened out and decided not to too but um, I actually had four things. I'm going to whittle it down to a couple. One being, um, continue to engage in the things you enjoy outside of medicine. That's what keeps you sane. So I, I think your your enthusiasm for some for some non-medicine related things are is absolutely great. Um, and lastly, I think one of the saddest things that we all uh, well, I'll back up and say it this way. Um, I was given some, this advice early on, and I remember back when I matriculated in the medical school, they got all the, uh, the new students together, and I don't know if they were trying to scare us out of it or what, but they, they looked at us and they said, so 50% of you that are married today won't be in four years. And I don't know if that's accurate or not. But, and the other thing I remember them saying was, just remember that your degree does not tuck you into bed at night. And the point being, there are things that are more important than your career. And I've watched you. It's been, it's been fun to have you and Sheath Law on our team. And um, you've worked together well. I know you're going to make a great team. And we wish you the very best. Come on up here.
My name is Katina Rue. I'm a former faculty and associate program director at CWFM, and I'm here to present Alana Muir. And I'm warning you, I'm a crier, like Sierra, apparently, and I just lost my notes. But Alana, can you come up here now so I can look at you a little closer? So, I've known Alana for a really long time. I knew Alana as a medical student. We worked very closely together during her family medicine clerkship and during her sub-internship. And I knew that we needed Alana as CWFM for several reasons. One reason is she makes amazing macaroons. Red team, do you remember that? Oh my God. So I thought I need more of that. But more importantly, her passion for service to the underserved community in Yakima Valley. We needed someone at our residency who really embodied everything that we're about at CWFM. Um, luckily, I became her advisor when she came in. I fought for you um, and got you on the red team. And we spent many years together working closely through our ups and downs. I think we're a lot alike in many ways, the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, and I think that's made us both better people. I cry every year, so sorry. Um, I've watched her become a mom, a devoted wife, a loving mother to two soon to be three babies. I've seen the community of family and friends that she has in this town. I see the dedication that she shows to the patients who have no one else who will take care of them. I've seen her advocate for those patients. I've seen her work with the HIV patients in our valley with love, kindness, respect, and true clinical expertise. I've learned so much from you, Alana, and I'm so happy that you're gonna continue to serve our valley working at Memorial um, in the clinic and also working um, in hospice and palliative care that's where I've seen some of your best medicine is guiding patients and their families through that difficult aspect of their journey of life. And I understand you're gonna be doing a graduate certificate in hospice and palliative care, which we need more of in the Valley. Thank you, Alana, for teaching me so much. And you owe me some macaroons. <laughs> I, I'm one of the new faculty, although I've been in Yakima for 28 years. So I have worked with most of these residents since, since they were um, the first month that they were here doing OB and being a community uh, provider with them. What I'd first like to say is congratulations to our incoming class. Those initials behind your name are well earned and very hard to get. and I think that you have done a wonderful job. To all of our residents who have survived this last year, what an amazing year it has been in so many ways. And you have my gratitude as a colleague for all that you have done for all of the patients in this valley. Dr. Portia Jones is the um, advisor for these next two young people. Um, she was unable to be here, so Dr. Um, Isaacs asked me, kind of last minute sort of would I present these and I said oh I'd be glad to so I said I had four years of drama in high school so speaking of that my first the first person I'd like to talk about is Josh Johnson I will tell you that Josh and I are definitely kindred spirits in so many ways um, I would describe Josh as a brave amazing young man he is a very genuine personality. He's a born leader. Um, he's extremely compassionate, and fortunately, we're gonna have him here in this community for many, many, many years to come. He'll be able to take care of me when I get to hospice, right? <laughs> I'll bet it never comes. Well, um, well, if it does, that's okay. I'm in good hands with you and Alana, so. Um, 
but I think that um, he he embodies what it is to be a family doctor. And most of you I know that I have very strong feelings about what a family doctor should be. And whether you choose to do OB or you don't choose to do OB or you do ER or you do inpatient medicine or you do whatever, it's not that that makes you a family doctor. It's the spirit inside of you that makes you a family doctor. And Josh is definitely a family doctor. Um, I'll have to tell you a story. The first time I met Josh, he was doing his sub-I um, in Yakima. And Mindy Udell introduced me to him. We were up on OB, and I had a patient in labor, or I was on call, or I can't remember. And he'd had a couple of pretty eye-opening experiences. So she introduced me, and she said, well, this is Josh. Josh is from Yakima, da-da-da-da-da. And I looked at him, and he just looked at me like a deer in the, you know, an eye in the headlights. It was like... Don't make me do anything, please. <laughs> but he did a great job that night. He performed well, as he has done for three years. And it is my honor. I, I hate that Dr. Jones is not here, but it's my honor to present him with his certificate. my notes I jotted these down five minutes ago so <laughs> last but not least um, is Dr. Bowie um, <laughs> I will tell you that the words that I use to describe on are fierce graceful articulate beautiful who could who could doubt that right <laughs> she's an amazing provider we're fortunate to be on the same team together. And most of you know that I had a fairly large panel when I came to CWFM. And some of my patients, because I've taken care of them for so long, are pretty, they're pretty picky about who they see. But I will tell you that Dr. Bowie has seen numerous of my patients and they absolutely love her. So that speaks very highly of her because for someone to step in and not even know these people, she has done an amazing job. Um, she is going to go with Charles, I think, correct? <laughs> Eventually. She's going to have some fun first. We'll let Charles go work and she can have some fun. So she's going to be um, following Charles and she'll become part of the Army as well because as those of us who have been in the military can tell you, our families are part of the military as well. So whether she likes it or not, she's going to be in the army. <laughs> she will dress much better than most of them do. Yeah. But all speaking aside, Dr. Bowie is an amazing practitioner, and she too embodies what I consider to be the elements that are most important in family medicine. And it's my honor to present her certificate.